All right, George, we saw you in the Octagon with Francis Carmon. It was the first time you were in there. What was that like? It's the first time I, uh, I, I coached Francis for the fight. I, uh, I coached most of his fight that I was not busy training. But uh, it was the first time Ferraz wasn't there, so I, I was a little bit nervous. And um, yeah, looking back to the fight, I made a little mistake. And, uh, going into the, the third round, it was 1-1 in the round. So I told Francis I tried to give him some work to make some some stuff in his past come back up and give him the motivation and the, the, the energy to go and start the round strong. But by doing this, sometimes he, he strike and expose himself to the takedown. So I have a, a little bit of the blame to take for that loss. Uh, you know, um, as a corner man, uh, I was more like as a coach for this time. So I'm learning from my mistake. You know? What did it feel like to be that close to the octagon again? Did you get that itch to say, hey man, I want to go in there? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's something different because it's your friend that performed. You, feel, you have a different stress, but it's still the same kind of a similar feeling than when I, when I fight. But uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy where I am right now. So uh, maybe one day, we'll see. I spoke to Dana White and I said, look, there's a lot of stuff that George St. Pierre says that gets lost in translation. Why don't you guys just talk? Talk it out to see what seems to be the issue. Have you had a chance to speak with Dana White? No, uh, not, not Dana White. Uh, I didn't ch the chance to speak. I speak with Lorenzo, the, the big boss. Dana White is the, the promoter, and he's probably the best promoter in the world. And I'm not angry at Dana White. This thing he said at the press conference, and, and uh, it's his opinion. I have my opinion, and different people have different opinion. Uh, his job is to promote the fight, and he doesn't care if people like him, like it or hate it. The only one thing he wants is that you tune in, and he's doing his job amazingly. The UFC would not have been where it is if Dana White would not be there. He's like, I think he's pretty much pound for pound the best promoter of all sport combined. He's amazing. Well, you're the best pound for pound fighter, arguably by many people's standards, but Rory McDonald also competed. He's got a bright future in the sport. You saw what he did against Damian Maya. Is Rory ready for a title shot? I, I think so. I think he is. I think he. I think Rory will be champion soon. Um, his loss to Lawler make him uh, much better, I believe. And, uh, you know, he, he, I believe he's got all the tools to become world champion, and I, I think he will. Speaking of world champions, Johnny Hendricks and Robbie Lawler will be competing for what many say is your title. Are you going to that fight, and what's going to go through your mind when that belt gets wrapped around somebody else's waist? I'm not going to go uh, live in the fight because, you know, I, I'm taking a break right now of all this. <clears throat> but I'm going to watch it. And uh, it's gonna be a. They both have the power to knock each other out, uh, standing up. Uh, but I, I see Johnny as a little advantage in the wrestling and grappling department because of his experience. And the southpaw? Are they both? Does, does, it, does it neutralize each other? No, they, they, they both southpaw, but they, they, it's gonna be interesting. You know, sometimes we can speculate about how the fight will go and everything. But it, it all comes down to the night of the fight. You, you, you never really know what's going to happen 100%, you know? And you don't know what's going to happen in each other's, each, the, the, these guys' life, you know? Sometimes things can affect a fight, and you don't know. You have to go behind the scene and see, but we'll find out all that uh, the night of the fight. Two final questions real quick. DNA, the DNA of GSP takedown recently came out. Captain America's coming out. Is that the future for George St. Pierre acting? No. I, I, first, the, the documentary, that was not my project. I had nothing to do with it. The only thing I had to do is to accept the fact that they were going to film me. I didn't put the piece together. I didn't have a word to say if I want some scene and not. Otherwise, I would have made it differently. But I let the, the producer to do their job. Of course, if I didn't want it out, I would I could have sued them and it would interrupt the whole project. But I didn't because I worked very hard on it, and they, I believe they made a good job. And uh, yeah, for Cap like, uh, Captain America, it was an experience. It was a lot of fun. I was, you know, I'm considering myself a martial artist. But now I'm in. A, I'm just taking a break. We'll see what's gonna happen. You know. Final question: Alexander Gustafson. Is he going to wear the Team Canada jersey? Are you going to hold uh, him accountable and put that jersey on? He's supposed to, yeah, because we, we made a bet on the the, uh, the final in the Olympic game. Uh, G 
John Scholish did it. He, uh, he lost. He's one of my friends. He fought in UFC. So he's a big hockey fan. So we made a bet. Uh, he, th he thought that USA were, were going to beat Canada like uh, in a rematch. But uh, he had to wear a Canadian jersey. Now uh, Gustafsson will do it. But I think he, he, from what I've heard, he had problem finding the jersey, which is, which sure is normal. <laughs> well, we, we, I don't know, but, but I believe he, it's hard. I don't know if he's in Sweden. I'm sure they don't have many uh, hockey. Uh, hockey is very popular in Canada, but we forgot sometimes in the rest of the world, but most of the country, they don't really care about it. So they, they, I'm sure he's, gonna, he's a man of his word. He's going to do it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.